Hey everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan Live. I'm Scotty J. Got a different kind of show for you right now. Because, you know, I know we've been featuring a lot of guys that have like been in the music industry for a long, long time. You know, some real icons. One of the things I really look forward to, though, is when we get to talk to a band and, and musicians that haven't been around all that long. And as a matter of fact, they're just starting to make their bones now. But what's even better is when these guys are like coming out gangbusters. Like these guys are going to be huge. Uh, you know, Grammys is, is something that could definitely be in the conversation. These guys are already parts of soundtracks. They've been featured in some major, major events. So everybody, without further ado, I got this band. Three brothers. Three brothers. They look like triplets. But uh, they're twins, and the other one's just a, a year different in age. But my God, I mean, these guys, I got a good feeling. And these guys are Council. Hey, everyone. Hi. How's it going? Good, good. All right. So we've got uh, we got Andy, and we got Patrick, and we got Doug with us. Yes? Yep. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right on. So uh, well, <laughs> it's funny, because I was asking you guys, man, obviously, you know, I was kind of joking around. Are you guys triplets? Because you really look alike. Now, uh, Patrick, you and which brother is it that's your twin? Doug. Doug. I, All right. Are you guys identical or fraternal? We're identical but mirror. So if we, he's left-handed, I'm right-handed. And so basically it's like kind of the opposite effect looking in a mirror. You know. Get out of here, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, even our personalities are kind of like that too. So that's it's all funny that's Part funny. hair different sides and stuff and yeah well i hate you guys no matter what you are you all got perfect <laughs> hair man like i got no hair look at you guys man you guys you could already have like you know hair product endorsements across the board man i'm telling you man you guys are good but it's funny because i have twins like we were talking about a little bit yeah. before when we were just uh, getting to know one another i have twins now my twins that are seniors in high school this year they're graduating and whatnot uh, i have a boy and a girl and Ooh. i can't begin to tell you how many people ask me, oh, you have twins, boy, girl. Are they identical? I'm like, they're boy and a girl. How identical do you think they are? You need me to take off their diaper, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, what, what do you want here, you know? So obviously they are fraternal. Couldn't be any other way, I don't think, um, you know, but you never know. People so always uh, draw, you know, everyone has that twin type of trivia they like to ask or if they know about twins, they mm -hmm. like to flaunt it a little bit. And you're like, wow, you couldn't be further off. You know, like it's so weird. Some of the perceptions people have about twins you, and they don't look at all three of us go like three or you go, are you twins? They go, it would be triplets if we all were like that. But it's, <laughs> no, we're not. It's confusing. It's you're like, what are you asking? I don't know. Yeah, they'll like, look at all three of us and point to all three and go twins. And we go, even if we were, it'd be triplets, not twins, but. Well, that's funny. Well, there's no question that you guys all come from the same parents because, yeah. I mean, you still all look alike. I mean, like identical. At least two of you definitely are. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For Andy, I mean, you, you look just like your other brothers. So that's wild, man. Now, because you guys are all so close in age, one of the things I'm curious about, did you guys all start playing music around the same time or did one of you get another one of you into it? How did, how did the music life become part of your family? It was um, the same time. Yeah, it was the exact same time. You never let me answer these questions. I know, I figured you could. <laughs> um, actually, we were watching uh, Oasis Beyond the Music. It was a rerun. And Liam said something like, if you think you could do a better, start your own effing band. And we're like, <laughs> and we're like you know, we should, we should become a band. And we were in college, and we never played instruments. And we're like, you know what? Let's do it. And I think we just were naive at Andy, that point. Andy had a guitar he never used. So he's like, I'm a guitar player. Doug's like, I'll do drums. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I'll do bass. And I'm like, I'm only going to do this if you guys are committed to like dropping out and actually trying to do this band thing. And so like, they're like, yeah. So we literally ended up like finished up the year, stopped going to school, went back to the farm, worked to buy some instruments. And, um, you know, just thinking like, I didn't know what was ahead of us. You know, I wouldn't recommend looking you back. I would never have been, if I knew what I was going to endure. Yeah. There's just no way I would have gone through it, but. You know, I'm glad we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny, man. That's too funny. You jumped ahead of me a little bit on the whole instrument part. But that's perfect, you know, because I'll just get right into that. So all you guys are very talented, you know, but there's only so many different instruments to go around, you know. Someone's got to sing. Someone's got to play drums. Someone's got to play the guitar. So how did that break out? You know, because obviously, Pat, you know, you, you, you do the vocals and then Doug, you're on the drums and then Andy, you play guitars. 
Uh, was that just something that kind of came naturally to you guys, or did you draw straws? Um, it was more along the drawing straws part. I right? always wanted to play drums, though. Yeah, I knew, I knew, like when I was younger, I was like, oh, it'd be cool to be on the drum set. I didn't ever think I'd actually play drums, and I didn't think I'd ever be a musician. But I thought they look cool. Um, so I knew when that came available, I was that was going to be my first choice. And Andy, usually Doug and I give up if Andy wants something, so we're nicer. So we're like, oh, I like guitar. But when well, we I actually wanted to play drums, but I figured I'd have no control if I played drums. So I'm like, fuck it, guitar. At least I can have a say. I can write songs. And stuff. I was too stupid to realize bass players don't get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I, I got a few uh, bass players that I've talked to, some friends of mine that might take exception to that. Yeah. But, you know. But, yeah, they're the no. Smooth, they're the smooth guys that, like, low talk. Like, you, you know, it's just a gig. Baby, you know <laughs> what I mean? And, like, but we, when we, we all, like, practiced our instruments but never sang. So we're, like, thinking to ourselves after a couple of years, we're like, okay, okay. And then we're like, fuck, someone's got to sing. And we're not bringing someone else into this mess that we got going on. So what happened is really is Andy and I honestly – Pick some cover songs, and we had to try out for Doug. And that's how we decided this. I still so, think I won the trial. And Andy, I, I said, is, uh, Andy might have won it by a little bit, but I figured in the long run, Pat was more willing to like put on a show and do what I wanted that I had to pick Pat because I'm like, I know he'll go out and do things that I, I think a lead singer should do, and Andy's more like, oh, I won't do that. So I was like, for the good of the group, I got to pick Pat. But I think Andy was probably much better back then okay. yeah, than Pat was. All right, all right. Well, everybody, again, we are here with Doug, Pat, and Andy Reeves. They are counsel, and uh, they're out of New York. You guys got an EP that's, uh, you know, coming not far down the road here. But one of the things I want to go back to is your debut EP, um, Rust to Gold. Man, you guys got some serious attention right out of the gate with that. Um, I know that your music was featured on, you know, on American Idol, FIFA World Cup, the Winter Olympics back in 2018. What was it like for you guys to get that kind of attention right out of the gate? Pretty uh, wild. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's overwhelming. It was yeah. kind of a shock. You know, you don't think uh, it's something you, yeah, that you would write or, or do whatever, do that well, I guess. You don't picture it, you know, until you hear it somewhere and you're like, wow, that's really cool. I think when we were writing, it was actually called No Ceiling, Rust to Gold was, and we were okay. writing it. And uh, it was basically still like kind of a bio. If you listen to it, it's kind of like us coming from the farm. And um, we were thinking to ourselves, we never really thought about what sinks are, but not really knowing that part of the industry. But then once the song was done, we are like, this sounds like it could be used in these sporting events. So mm. when eventually it actually came true, we reached out to these people, Doug did most of it, you know, and they actually ended up using it's just like, wow, I, you know, it almost hit you like, holy, I never thought this would happen, you know. That's wild. Now, it's funny because I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but you guys touched on it. And everybody that's gone out to, you know, the council Facebook page or website and whatnot, they'll see your bio that uh, you're farmers. And you went from farming to music. <laughs> yeah. You guys do not look like any farmers I've ever seen. Now, I live in Chester County, Pennsylvania, okay? Like, and I actually grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm, okay, guys? My neighbors were Amish. Doesn't get any more much farming community than that. You don't look uh, like any yeah. farmers I've ever seen. What kind of farm are you guys raised on? Like, uh, it's, it's uh, fruit and vegetable. Fruit and vegetable, fruit and vegetable yep. Yeah. Okay, all right. So it's not like you're out wrestling up the cattle and, no, no, you no. know. It's not like they are either. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what kind of fruits and vegetables? Uh, sweet corn, strawberries, all kinds of peppers, squashes, Blue tomatoes, berries, melons, anything you can think of. Uh, lettuce. It's I a think they grow kale now too. Yeah, Broccoli, it's a cauliflower. It's a big farm, and uh, you know we're fortunate. Our uncles own it. My dad's been there now for a long time. You know they all grew up. It's like fourth generation. But uh, that's so cool. Up, yeah. So I mean, we started working with like twelve and thirteen, and full time, you know, like seventy hours a week. And for us, it was just very normal, you know, everyday stuff that we did. And enjoyed and you know and now we kind of miss it obviously but uh -huh. at the time we're just thinking we need i mean we didn't enjoy it during the summer yeah. when your fucking your friends are out <laughs> yeah God. it's a hundred degrees and you're like making yeah. three months an hour and you're like oh shit you know this sucks it's but sucked, yeah i think hindsight looking back on it, you're like those were good times it gave us a good yeah. work ethic for sure I I yeah. yeah it's hard it's work yeah. it is it is long and it's like regardless what any type of farming is it's your your committing to it you know all day long every single day you're kind of living it and it's you know that's your world and so you're kind of secluded for everything it's else it's a grind it it's is grind. it is it's more mental than physical for sure you know well you know the funny thing the parallel that you could draw with music you know 
Very much the same thing. So it's cool that you got that kind of disciplinary foundation laid out for you because obviously you guys know that the music world's a lot of hard work too, you know? It is a grind. Yes, yeah. it is. Absolutely. You know? You might get more rewarded in farming than you do in music <laughs> if you do well in farming, you know, with your crops. Then music, you're not guaranteed a reward at the end, you know? There's nothing that comes even if you put out something that's fired. You know, there's no, no one owes you anything in this business, and unfortunately, you know, and always the right people don't get what they deserve. It's a right. good lesson we learn pretty quick. But you're not as dependent on the weather. No, that's true. No, that's true. No. You know, but oh, man. You know, I'm looking at you guys right now, man. It's like everybody, all right, everybody watching this right now. Do these guys not have the most perfect freaking hair and beards like ever? God, I think as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to have to go up and like groom myself. I feel like a total <laughs> hobo. I feel like a complete bum right now. Jesus. <laughs> But, oh, God. So, Rustigold, you know, you came out of the gate and you guys had some great success. Much deserved because I loved your music video. And that's actually Nadia. Got to give a shout out to Nadia, you know, for hey, hooking us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she sent me the Rustigold video and I'm just like, damn. I'm like, wow, these, these guys are, like, really good. And, uh, you know, I got to share this with my kids because it's like, woo. You know, now I'm not old. I'm not old. I just started young, Okay. So, you know, so my, uh, my, my seniors in high school that are graduating this week, you know, I, you know, I knew right away that they would love your music. And of course they did. And I like that. I like that about your music that it, uh, yes. you know, it's, you're not pigeonholed in any one thing. Like you can definitely transcend generations, you know, I mean, I can see where your appeal would be obviously to, you know, younger people you know young generation you guys got to have young girls like going absolutely ballistic and uh you know obviously i think you guys have a, a reach you know for you know older folks older than myself you know people that uh are at high risk for coronavirus even dare i say <laughs> you know but uh oh man speaking of which you know you guys being up there in new york i know it's one of the hotbeds how you guys been doing with all that I, I, we've, yeah, been, we've, we've been we've been fortunate we've been we good have, uh we haven't really had any. No, nothing really with us, but we've been like safe. And I know a lot of people, you know, I'm sure Ron, you're already too, are very hesitant still to go out or, you know, really doing the spacing. And I mean, um, it's it's not great being indoors all the time, but it's definitely I'm not in a hurry to go out to eat or to a movie or something at this point. It's not worth anybody's yeah. help. And I certainly want to, wouldn't want to do that to someone else either. I'd feel, you know, terrible if I was the one who did that to someone else. So. Yeah. I know depending on where you are in the country, a lot of people get mad at that, but we've had some family friends who ended up, you know, losing their life. So you just take it very oh, seriously. Oh God, that's terrible, man. I'm really sorry. I don't want to, thank you. I, I don't want to be a downer on the interview. I was just saying. Yeah, reality. but no, it is reality and people yeah, need yeah. to know it. People need to hear it because obviously we're all getting fed a lot of different information. You know, there are those people out there that are really downplaying it. There, and then there's people out there that are overplaying it. And it's just like, well, what are the facts? Well, the facts are that people are getting sick and people are dying. So you do need to take that part of it seriously. And what we do moving forward, I don't know. But it would be nice to start uh, living again. And we all need to come together right now. <laughs> see what i did there guys see nice. yeah yeah so one of the things i want to touch on you know aside from the songs that are going to be on your ep and uh you know haunt me get numb um born ready awesome songs but i've always said this to you know all my musician friends when you do a cover you know, like you got to own it. You better knock it out of the park. It's got to be just as good, if not better, because otherwise it's, it's, it's one of those epic belly flops, you know, yeah. like you think you're going to dive off the diving board and do some awesome flip. And then somewhere up in the air, you get, you know, all apprehensive. Oh God, what did I do? And splat <laughs> belly flop. And you come up, you're like, Oh God, <laughs> but come together, uh, Epic, epic Beatles song, you know, I mean, one of their biggest ever, not that everything the Beatles didn't do wasn't huge, but you guys went there and I would say you guys did a very good job of it. What made you do that? Thank you. Uh, thank you very thank much. You, yeah. the, um, it was, uh, we were asked to do it from a label 45 out of London for charity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it was random. They had, uh, you know, heard some of our songs. And it was for um, it? November, November for yeah. men's issues, which is great, you know, with testicular cancer, a certain mm. prostate cancer. And so we're like, of course, we'd love to do it. Uh, they gave us a list of songs to choose from. 
Um, some of them are like Queen. Of course, you don't want to tackle that because we couldn't really wrap our mind. We only had like a week to do it. And I wasn't about to try to do a Freddie Mercury remake. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stupid, right. you know. And right. then the come together, we had we had started doing it with the baseline, you know, the baseline everyone knows. And we're like, you know, we can't do the exact same thing. We'll get crushed. Like you're saying, it's, it's just not going to work. So we tried to, you know, come up with a modern beat with it. And uh, we would worked with a gentleman named Kevin. We had shown it to him. And he's like, I really love it. Maybe I can, you know, help you guys do a little bit here and there and really spruce it up and um, we had worked together on it and we only had like a week to do it. And it turned it's, out really well. Our approach for covers usually is we'd like to do it completely different than the original, because like you said, it's just, there's a, we feel like we're competing with the, the original band if we do it the same way. And obviously you're going to lose that competition. Yeah. So it's like, why not just do it differently? At least you're showing appreciation for, for the song. It's like, I'm going to leave your song alone and just do this version of it. It, it seems to work, work well for us at least. Because it's, it's it's a lot of pressure to try to cover a song that's you know that incredible by an incredible band. I'd really it's easier to just switch it up a little bit, make it your own. I mean, we could have done what every other artist does and slows it down like to halftime, and then just takes it real easy on everything. But yeah, well, I mean, you guys seriously, I mean, you talk about the old saying, "Go big or go home." You know, doesn't get any bigger than you know the Beatles. I mean, good grief! I mean, every single artist alive today who's playing would probably say, you know, if I asked them, oh, what are some of your musical influence? The Beatles. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, and the funny thing is, I mean, you talk about transcending time. Like I was saying, I believe you guys definitely have that capability. Um, you know, my daughter, you know, she's a senior in high school. Her favorite band, the Beatles, you know, she's got more vinyl on her walls of the Beatles than I do, you know, and she, <laughs> and she wears the same hoodie all the time around the house. She'd probably kill me if she heard me saying this. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. But yeah, I think it's cool. I think it is so freaking cool that she's into the Beatles and I had nothing to do with it. I grew up on the Beatles. I mean, cause like, oh my God, my dad's record collection is insane. He's got, oh, I love the Beatles. But I didn't push that on my kids, and here my daughter's like, it's her favorite band, and she's going around playing ukulele, and, and, and she's playing Beatles songs. I'm like, oh my god, that's so freaking cool. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that being said, does music run in your family? Um, did you get this from anyone else, or is this something where you just kind of... Uh, the, only, the only one who was, our sister played the flute, and she was just naturally good at it. Okay. Um, our parents have no musical ability at all. <laughs> Not, run we wasn't running the family. Yeah, we weren't okay. one of those families that always like sang when you're growing up or your parents play acoustic and you sing it. Like we never really, the, the one thing that we had though was our dad did, like your dad had a good record collection and he would always sit us down and play like Meatloaf, Neil Diamond, The Who and 45s and, and, and ask us about the songs. Be like, why do you like this song? Why do you think it's catchy? And so, he'd make us read the lyrics. Too. Yeah, so like when we, we always played sports, but then when we finally decided to be a band, we could draw on that and say like, hey, remember the BG song we loved or Queen Under Pressure? We could tell you where it skipped, you know, on the record player. And so like we were able to draw on that and be like, okay, you know, we like these melodies, we don't. So that kind of gave us at least something to draw from. Um, I don't know if that makes you a musician, but it definitely at least helped us growing up with that type of influence. Yeah, no, that's cool. Well, it all has to start somewhere, you know, yeah. so might as well start with you guys. And hopefully it's something that you pass on, you know, to future Reeves generations. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's very cool. And again, everybody, we are here with the band Council. They're out of New York and they got a brand new EP, Haunt Me, coming out not in the not too distant future. And uh, we got... Patrick, Doug, and Andy Reeves here, and uh, yeah, very, very cool. So um, I know that you guys have kind of been releasing singles off this upcoming EP, um, Savages, very yep. cool, liked it a lot, and uh, so that came out, and I know that you know we were talking about Get Numb, which was originally yep. slated for a May 22nd date, had to push it off, and you know, I, I stalked you guys on social media. So I saw that, you know, this is something that you were going to be pushing off. Are you at liberty to divulge why you had to push off Get Numb? Or is that something that will reveal itself in due time? No, I think it's good. I think, you know, we're always hesitant because we don't want to seem like those type of people. But um, we pushed it to June 23rd because we were fortunate to meet with uh, Sure uh, media, media, group. media Group, the president there we had met with. Um, over the phone, obviously. Okay. And uh, we sent him an email. He got on the phone the next day and um, he wanted to work with us with the single and really believed good things were to come. Um, his wife is super PR person. Uh, she does Beyonce, did Prince. 
and she was the head of Sony Media for seven or eight years. So um, we are only a handful of clients they take on, and we are fortunate, and that's why we pushed getting up for this. Beyonce, Prince. Yeah, yeah you know, no one of note, you know. <laughs> My God, that's awesome. Now, I got to yeah. ask you, you know, in support of this new album that's going to be coming out, are we thinking about any official new music videos um, like you did with, uh, you know, Rust of Gold? Are we going to be doing anything like that? Yeah, I, I think we are you know, planning uh, lyric videos to start with probably for every mm -hmm. single release and even back on Born Ready and Savages and then move to actual videos as well for that, um, including live videos as well. We, you know, we just have the capability now where we can record ourselves live directly so then we can make sure the audio is proper so we can give our fans like you go to YouTube, you'll see a full video that we're going to put up of each of the songs as well. Um, so we're trying to get that content out there. We've been a little slow on the videos because the videos cost a little more than the rest. <laughs> of yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to sell, uh, you know, some more strawberries and sweet corn, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 People can get up in the merch sales or something, you know, buy like the ten thousand dollars shirt or something. <laughs> oh, there you I, go. I'll give away Andy for a day for it. Yeah. Gold thread, gold thread, you know, yeah. binding all the garment together. Yeah, right, all man. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Now, uh, am I correct in assuming that, uh, did I see you have a special event coming up, uh, what, May 22nd? Mm, the did 29th we do. Oh, the 29th. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's all right. Same, pretty much the same thing. It's a uh, festival stalker pres uh, presents, uh, it's a German festival. German I festival. I forgot the name of it. Dude, I'm terrible. Not good. Not, Not good. good. Not oh, good. Well, I, I hope really you remember your lyrics better than your events, man. You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, you know, it's a good, I, it's Festival Stalker Presents Something, and I always forget because it's in German, so I have to ask Doug, like, right before I go on, I ask him 10 times, now what's it called, what's it called again? To get in my head, but uh, yes, we're fortunate to be playing that, and then the day after, we're actually doing a fundraiser for Brain Aid, it's uh, for, for mental awareness, because that's awesome. this month, so awesome. that's very important to us as well. Uh, right. We want to help with, and that's really what Get Numb is about. Um, that's why we wanted to release it to make that segue is uh, Mental Awareness Month. We wrote this song about our own depression and our own mental awareness issues that we've faced. So that was something that we truly believed in as well. Right on, dude. Near and dear to my heart. You know, I've dealt with it my whole life. But I mean, I think that's just something that plagues us creative spirits. You know, like no matter what art you're into, whether it be, you know, music or writing or painting you know, sculpt, whatever, whatever your art form may be. It does seem that, uh, you know, us people are a little more plagued, you know, by the mental, emotional side of life. So kudos to you. I think that's really, really cool. Um, so, I mean, other than the EP that uh, you're going to be having come out, do we have a definitive date for when that's going to be coming? Yeah, uh, it is August 4th, actually, is All the right. final. But this is what... I'm going to surprise for your for all your viewers here. So we're going to lay down a, a, a surprise here. Okay. Um, we are also we had all our fans vote on a cover song, and so what right. we were going to do is had everyone vote, and we redid this cover song, and then we're actually going to release it. So what we do is we're releasing "Get Numb," followed by, and this is the official we this is the number one voted song that we should cover is "Oasis Wonderwall," is the song we are covering uh, for our next release after "Get Numb." Before haunts me is the surprise to the fans and everyone else. We redid it, and it sounds pretty badass. Well, it's not going to be a surprise when they all see this. Well, that's... I, I just well, I want to do it for your show, so that no well, one's heard it. Well, thank you, Patrick. That's You're very, welcome. very cool. Oh, my Good. God. That is so awesome. Um, well, you know, I know you guys' time is valuable, and, you know, I got uh, some things I got to do here myself here. But uh, before, before I let you go, is there a special message that you guys would like to share with all the council fans out there? And for that matter, all the people that I know are soon to be council fans. Anything you'd like to tell them during this uh, time where, you know, there's a lot of anxiety and stress and, you know, just overall insanity? Two words. You're welcome. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. All right. That was that was just a joke. Was just a joke. Well, I like it. Confidence, uh, confidence, baby. You reek of it. It's good. For if you if you first of all, we want to thank our fans. Without them, we're not here. That's first wow. and foremost. We are more than grateful for every single thing they do for us, and and we can't express how grateful we are. And then for the people who do finally, if they do listen to our music, I want to say that these lyrics we have lived. 
We generally write these lyrics. We don't do throwaway lyrics. These are things that we've lived through that resonate with us that I think a lot of people can relate to. Um, in down times when you feel like you've been beaten down, when you feel like life's beating the shit out of you, um, all these songs are from that point of view, basically this dark optimism saying things will get better. And in the current situation, that's exactly what we're saying is, you know, things will get better. It's all in patience, believing in yourself and just saying, you know what, there's always a future. Let's just stay focused, keep moving forward one foot at a time. And that's kind of what we represent is like, hey, man, if if farmers from upstate New York can move down to the city and make, you know, try to make a go of it in music and almost anything's possible, you know, like just keep moving ahead and keep positive attitude. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, uh, Reeves Brothers, thank you so much for joining us on Rock Titan Live. And again, everybody, I'm Scotty J, and we are here with the brothers that form Council, Doug, Andy, and Patrick Reeves. And uh, they got their EP, like you just heard. It's going to be coming out in August, Haunt Me, and uh, awesome stuff. Guys, it's been such a blast meeting you. I mean, really, Very truly. Right. It's our yeah. pleasure. Love it. So, so, I, hope we, I hope we get to come back and chat some more. About Absolutely. That. Absolutely, man. Yeah, no, I can't wait. You're going to have to tackle some other uh, big legendary songs from the Beatles, man. That's a uh, tall order. I can't wait till my daughter sees it, man. Oh, God. You guys are going to wind up being a poster on her wall. That's going to feel <laughs> weird, man. That's going to feel really <laughs> weird for me. I'd be like, yeah, I talk to these guys. What the? What? What? You know, now they're on the a wall. a couple good jokes at them, and they're chuckling at the scene. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now, I know I'm going to see you guys on, like, some hair beard commercial. I know I am, you know? <laughs> It's like, my God, perfectly manicured. I got to go clean myself up. So, everybody, that's what I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to go groom myself. Um, but, again, guys, thank you so much, man. It's been a blast. Thanks and, a lot. Uh, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Live. We're out.